a long story. Tell me. Okay, so do you have the thing on? Yep, it's rolling. Oh, we're starting? It's rolling. <laughs> okay. As far as my childhood's concerned, I had a reasonably nice childhood. I was born in what Winston Churchill called the worst year in human history. I don't know if it was or not, but after World War II, I was just a little child. Buffalo had more displaced people than any other city in America, either percentage-wise or absolutely. So about every fifth person had a number on their arm. But nobody talked about it. I didn't know what was going on in my family. You know, they wouldn't tell you anything about what. What was it? They'd say, they'd say to the kids, don't make noise on the way to school. I said, why? I said, well, look to see if the person has a number. If he does, you for sure can't make noise. I mean, we did not know what stand with that man. Finally, from the movies, we began to understand what had happened. When I was a kid, you didn't go to school by yourself. You had to go to school with at least 15 other kids. Why? Because it was after the war and they were afraid of anti-Semitism. And they were right. They were absolutely right. And I went to the suburbs. I like that for one thing. They had this stuff called grass. And I'm not talking about stuff you smoke. And a chemical factory. It was Allied Chemical or National Analyne as it was called. It was a very dirty factory. But they paid the best. So I said, okay, I'll take it. I, was, I needed the money to go to college because my father had been quite ill. And I said, all right, I'll do it. The, fact, the, the factory, if you can believe this, in 1962 was, or was still de facto, in fact, segregated. Theoretically, it wasn't. In 62? 62, yes. And the guy who got me the job said, you can either work with 50 Polish guys or 50 black guys. Well, it's your choice. He said, but I have to have an answer right away. So I said, I said, you got a third choice? He said, no. He said, okay, I think I'd rather work with the, the, the 50 black guys. He said, I think that would be wise. There's a lot of tension still between Jews and Poles. I had not yet discovered meaningful work. I was filled with the American work ethic. I was not a keen fan of unions at that time. Well, I never had a religious epiphany, but I had a political one at last, and, and, that, and it was then. And the irony was, at the end of the day, depending on what color you worked in, what color dye, everybody, the black guys, the white guys, they all looked the same, because if it was green dye, everybody was green. Which I thought was kind of ironic. grateful for the chance to have begun to, not just begun, but to pursue my philosophic interests. For almost the last 20 years, I've, I've been able to start writing again, big, full time. So I, I, I've written on a lot of stuff. I work on this philosopher journal, Emmanuel Levinas, who I think is terribly important. And I, I, I've gotten to write, I, got, I get good students here. People have been very supportive at the Learning Center and I have good colleagues that I work with and I like that. So even though I, I, I became a professor perhaps in spite of myself, I don't know anyone less suited for it. I mean, you know, not never, ever, ever in my wildest dreams that I that I think that I would do something like that. I had no idea what it even was, frankly. And I said, okay. I thought, you know, you, you become a philosopher, you become a Sometimes you write, and you think, and you read, and that's it. We also have to make a living. The gigantic mammoth home run. Off of Satchel Page. That's right. That's right. <laughs>